good evening and welcome. Tonight we'll be going over the history and geography of Adygea uh, within Russia. Now, first of all, I've heard like 10 different ways to pronounce this place. I think it depends on where you are from in the world, but I'm pretty sure the most common pronunciation that I heard was Adygea. So I'm going to stick with that. So if you want to be like, that's not how it is, I'm just doing my best here. <laughs> um, so Adygea, as you can see, is at the very bottom of this page in my atlas. The bottom gets cut off a little bit, but I'm going to pull up my tablet and show you the area on Google Earth. So you'll see the whole thing there, but you're not missing much down there. There are pretty much three main areas geographically of Adygea that I found. Starting down here, it is an incredibly mountainous place. It is part of the Caucasus Mountains. And there are many beautiful valleys and rivers and things like that in this area. You move up here, it gets, it's still kind of mountainous, but it's sloping downward. That's where uh, a majority of people live in this area. And you can see the capital city of Maikop is right there. This region I'm going to show you on Google Earth is 100% covered in farmland. It's really, really beautiful to see from above. And then there's this chunk over here. And this area is very um, swampy and wet. Uh, these lakes you see here are not actually lakes. They are reservoirs, kind of like same difference, right? But um, this whole area is pretty wet and a little swampy, but still really beautiful. Um, you can see the Black Sea and the Sea of Azov are right here, but Adigea does not have a coastline. It's completely landlocked. And you can see that it's pretty much surrounded by this oblast, no, or cry, sorry, it's a cry known as Krasnodar, um, which we're going to talk a little bit about in its history. And honestly, I think I'm going to sink right into it, so we'll talk about it. This area in ancient history has been the ancestral home of the Circassian peoples. The Circassians, obviously a kind of a Black Sea coastal culture. In ancient times, they had contact with the ancient Greeks, but the Greeks never really set up like serious colonies in the area. They just kind of traded goods and ideas and cultural aspects with each other. Um, but yeah, the the Romans would eventually move in and control the area. And just real quick, many different peoples came in and controlled the area. I'm just going to breeze through some of the more important ones. I won't be skipping some, so apologies if you wanted like an incredibly thorough detailed description of the region. But um, the Khazars came in for quite a while. Um, they were followed pretty much by rule from the Georgian princes whose territory was just to the south of here. But this area was ran by its own kind of monarchy. It was known as the Kingdom of Adigaza, I believe it's pronounced. And um, that's kind of like their golden age where the epic poems and literature in the Adiga language come from time. Um, but that all changed in 1234 when the Mongols rolled in and it destroyed everything in the area like Mongols do. Eventually the people who would have the upper hand in this area were the Tatars or the Crimean Tatars, which you can see Crimea is right here. So it wasn't too far. It's pretty much the Tatars' backyard, right? So they just kind of hopped in and took over. Um, Flash forward to the 1800s. Up here you have Imperial Russia. Down here you have the Ottoman Turks and the Persians. 
and they're all desperately trying to snatch up land in this little Black Sea coastal area with Aditya pretty much right smack dab in the middle of it. So there's a lot of Turkish influence, a lot of Persian influence, and a lot of Russian influence at the time. It kind of made a mix of a really interesting Aditya culture, which is um, like Russian culturally, but they're Islamic. Pretty interesting, I think. Very interesting culture. They have their own language as well, Aditya. And um, eventually, the Russians went out in this area during the, Rus I believe it's the Russo-Turkish War, they called it. They took over officially in 1785, but there was a lot of pushback throughout the ages, and um, Russia wouldn't really put its foot down in the area and say that this is Russia. By 1860, that's when the people really started to push back and said, absolutely not a conflict known as the Russo-Circassian War took place over the next four years and it's a little iffy on what exactly you define what went down here but at the end of the day the Russians expelled many many Circassians out of the area most of them had to go on foot towards safer places like Turkey many people did not survive the trip. So, on paper, that would be considered a genocide. Um, there's people that kind of push back on that. It's interesting how kind of along the Black Sea there's been many different occasions where things like this happened. People are like, well, that's not a genocide, blah, blah, blah. But we're not going to get into that tonight. It's a little iffy, but just know that that did happen. It ended by 1864 with a Russian victory, and Russia took over the region, but for the most part, the people got to keep their language and cultures and things, you know, keep their religion. But that would change in 1917 with the Russian Revolution. Um, Imperial Russia up there was overthrown by the Bolsheviks. For a minute, these people were left alone. They formed the Democratic Republic of Adyga. Adyga. <laughs> Adigea. It's been pronounced so many different, I've heard so many different pronunciations, they're all mushed into my head. Adigea. But the Bolshevik Red Army would invade by 1920, and by 1921, the Adigea SSR was founded. It would kind of get mixed in with Krasnodar, like the lines are pretty blurred. Krasnodar is the capital for a while, and then um, but that was pretty much because oil was discovered in the area. You can see a little bitty oil well there. Oil was discovered here. Very valuable for the Soviets. So, industry and city planning was focused on this area. And that's pretty much how it was until 1990. When the people were like, we can tell the Soviet Union's kind of starting to weaken, so we're going to just step up and form our Republic of Antigua. The Soviets weren't too fond of that. They had to eventually give in by 1991 once the Soviet Union cracks were finally showing. They were like, fine, have your independence. And once the Soviet Union was no more, and we have modern Russia, they allowed Atikea to have its autonomy. So they have their own constitution, their own presidents, things like that. And um, they just do their own thing within Russia. Like it's, it's like it's part of Russia, but it's not part of Russia. Um, but that's pretty hard to determine nowadays because the majority of people living in Atikea are Russians. Um, not so much the, um, like, indigenous, I suppose, the original inhabitants of the area. It is mostly Russians, and Russian is the primary language spoken here. The main issue of the day is a little obvious. Just right over here in their backyard is a major international war zone, and um, 
uh, DK has kind of been in the way, so to say, in that um, planes crash, drones crash, it's happened very recently actually. I'm filming this in March 2023 and the last big one was last month in February 2023. Um, but the Adija and the Russians pretty much get along very well. It's kind of one of those you leave us alone, we'll leave you alone kind of deals. The Russians don't poke and prod too hard at these people, and they don't poke and prod too hard back, and it's just kind of like an agreement to just live and let live. But um, we really don't know if that's going to last because of um, what's happening all over here, you know. Kind of a lot is happening. So we will see what the future holds for this region. Sorry that it was kind of quick. It's, there is a very long, long history of this region and it was one of those where either I give you a two hour video or a 20 minute video. So that's where we are. I'm going to show you the Google Earth, which there aren't a lot of pictures to show you, but the pictures that they do have are very, very beautiful. could see the hold on okay the borders are there it goes okay let's say it's not showing you the borders but now it is okay so here you can see the big wobbly lines of Adige and if I zoom out you can see where we are in the world so here you can see the Caucasus Mountains the Black Sea you can see Russia up here, Ukraine, down here is Georgia, Turkey, and so on and so forth. That corner of the world is where we are tonight. And look at this slideshow. Just an absolute paradise. It is so beautiful here. Beautiful rolling hills, covered in forests, mountains. You can see lots of Russian here. The buildings, because again, Russian is the primary language. The big mosque, I believe this is in my sure. Not sure what that building is. I can't read Sterling, so. Beautiful waterfalls and trees and lakes and little ponds and um, very courageous looking people. And yes, wonderful hiking trails. Um, from what I have heard, um, this area is not very welcome to tourists and it really depends on where you're visiting from, but they take their um, their ecosystem very seriously. There are hiking trails that you have to follow extremely strict rules or else, you know, you're in Russia, right? You have to follow the rules. So, just be warned if you're like, oh, I would love to visit. You have to abide by all of their rules and they will not be very kind if you do not do that. So, like I'm saying here, you can see all of the mountainous areas, the southern part of Adigea. We move up here to Maikop. Now tell me, um, you were built during the Soviet era without telling me your city was built during the Soviet era, right? <laughs> Look at these perfect grids. It's very efficient. I looked high and low to try to show you some cool things in the area, but um, the things that sounded really cool didn't have photos. The places that did have photos didn't have very exciting photos, so I tried really hard to show you some places in my comp, but alas. But then we go up north, and you can really see the landscape change from the wooded area to the cleared area, and when you zoom in, it's all farmland. Farms and farms and farms. It is a very agrarian society, if you can't tell. It is just pure farmland, their main industry. And then we come over to the reservoirs here. Um, the Krasnodatskoya Vodkoran. I'm not going to try. <laughs> I am not going to. As you can see, it gets pretty swampy wet 
and I found some cool pictures on Street View. I think it was this one was really cool. You can kind of get a big overview of what this part of Atikea looks like. A big, like, um, drone's eye view of the swamps and the trees and the rivers and the reservoirs. Very, very cool. And then Some people posted some cool photos. I just have to zoom out and figure out where I am. Sorry for the flashing blue. I've got turned around. There we go. They are over here. So let's go here just randomly. They're all really neat little photos here. And let's see, we are on the shore looking at the water here woods behind us. If we go to, let's go to one in the water. Let's see what that's like. And here we have, oh see we're on paddle boards here out in the water enjoying the lovely day. enjoying the fun day. So yes, very, you know, swampy, but fun kind of area. And pretty much that's all I have to show you in this region. It's a very little tiny piece of Russia. Many other parts of Russia are very big, so there'll be a lot more to show you as we go through the world. enjoyed this kind of content, please consider subscribing because we are going all over the world. Next, we're going to go to a very exciting part of Ethiopia. So if you don't want to miss out, be sure to subscribe. And thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this video relaxing and educational, and I hope that you have a very good, good, good day.